Howie Roseman is the villain in this story. This wasn't Howie Roseman. This was Jeff Lurie, a hundred percent. From the Prop Swap Studios of AM 1490 Sports Betting Radio and distributed by the Jacob Media Network, it's Extending the Play with John McMullen, powered by Prop Swap. Prop Swap that ticket and cash in while the odds have improved. It's your time, South Jersey, and our time on AM 1490 Sports Betting Radio for extending the play with your host, NFL insider, John McMullen. Today's program is presented locally by the Malamut Law Firm and Remax Real Estate and powered regionally by Bet River Party Poker and Dunkin' Donuts. Now, here's John McMullen. Another Saturday. Good morning, everyone. 10 o'clock straight up on a Saturday edition of Extending the Play alongside John McMullen. Johnny Mack, I'm Rich Quinones. We'll take you up to 11 o'clock right here on AM 1490 Sports Betting Radio on this 16th of January 2020. We've got playoff football to talk about. The divisional matchups, which I think are going to be very intriguing. But Johnny Mack, it's all about the head coaching search. It's almost like a, you got to send a search party out there when we're talking about the search. Philadelphia Eagles. And search. I love how all these names <clears throat> are being thrown. He's already got it going. He's clearing the throat. He's clearing getting ready throat. to pontificate. Yeah, Brandon Staley <laughs> being the latest. And we'll see if the Rams get knocked out of the playoffs against the Green Bay Packers, which I think is likely. So at this stage, you got to wait for certain candidates to finish up before you can go after them. Uh, you know, this search has gone pretty much as I expected. Guys with options have no interest in the Eagles. Uh, <laughs> and, and you're going to have to go for first-timers. Uh, sort of like, you know, a redux of Doug Peterson in 2016. Unless Jeffrey Glory comes to his senses and says, look, I have been overreaching. You know, it's interesting I wrote about this on Sports Illustrated, wrote about it in Philly Voice, and we're going to have my buddy Ed Kratz on later uh, from SI.com. Uh, I, you know, Joe Banner said it today yep. with, with Paul Domovich and, and, and his weekly sort of Q&A uh, at, at Philly.com. Uh, he admitted, even Joe Banner, Jeffrey Lurie's childhood friend, admitted Agents and coaches are going to be interviewing essentially the Eagles as well. Saying uh, well, what of the heck? They, of course, yeah. It, it's a that, that's an outstanding point you guys bring up, and it's funny because if you really look at the last two head coaches, Chip and Doug, they did not play nice with Harry Osmond. It's almost as if they wanted the GM out in order for them to kind of maintain order and stay where they're at and maybe try to continue to succeed. Obviously, it's a different scenario when it was with Chip Kelly than Doug having been uh, at the helm to um, hoist the Lombardi Trophy for the Philadelphia Eagles a couple of seasons ago. But, but I, I guess here's my question. If you are a head coaching candidate and you are interviewing with the Philadelphia Eagles, in the back of your mind – it might it might look like this great new Mercedes that you're getting ready to drive off the lot, but man, you better really check under the hood. Yeah, I mean, I I don't even think it looks like a Mercedes. If you um, want to uh, say, yeah, well, yeah, maybe maybe like a uh, maybe, maybe like a, a gremlin, gre maybe yeah. you know half the car, <laughs> maybe a, a a duster, a Plymouth duster. <laughs> yeah, that's a, you're right with, about with that. With the quarterback that's a situation, the uh, <laughs> no, uh, but I mean. From a standpoint of, look, there's only 32 of these right, shots. Right. Yes, it is a Mercedes. They're all Mercedes. Yep. Let's be honest. But So if you get that opportunity, we'll use Brandon Staley because he's the latest name. Look, he's not getting interviews anywhere else. He's a young he's a young guy skipping steps, right, as right. I like to say. Interview by default almost. Yeah. Yep. For, for him, it would be a Mercedes. Yes, that's a great point. Yep. For, for Robert Sala, who – has six interviews, 
and everybody's banging down his door. Yep. And he's Mugatu's hot, hot candidate uh, of the cycle. Uh, guess what? It's a Plymouth Duster. Yeah. And he's going yeah. to go in there and say, I- I'll take the visit to Palm Beach. I- I'll go sit sit at the estate, Jeffrey, and, 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 and take your hospitality. But I'm not going to seriously consider this job unless – you give me the power a typical coach in this this league, um, this league has. And and by the way, how do you do that if you're Jeffrey Lurie? You just had a Super Bowl winner. You wouldn't give it to him, and you're going to give what, it to Robert Sala or Lincoln Riley. Listen, or really for anyone for that matter, because there's probably part of that. You know, that that handshake agreement along with that contract cites, you know, we want X amount of power. I'm going to look. I want to have my say in player personnel, talent, value. It's not going to. See, that's what I think a lot of people don't understand. Jeffrey Lurie and Howie, Jeffrey Lurie's not going to turn around and do a 180 all of a sudden after 20-something odd years and decide, you know what, yeah, the next guy that comes in, here's the keys to the castle, here's the keys to the Mercedes, driving around, bang the hell out of it up, I don't care, you're running the show. It's not in his DNA. Well, I, I will say this, it's not a 180 for Jeffrey Lurie. For the vast majority of his ownership career, which is uh, over a quarter century now, uh, he has given power to his head coaches. Andy Reid had significant, significant power, uh, almost as much power as any head coach. But he in also league. built that equity up, did yes, he not? Yes. I think, I think, not in nineteen ninety nine. Yeah, but yeah. he built it up. Yeah, you would think. Guess what he didn't do, Rich? He didn't win a Super Bowl. No, here. no, he didn't. So you would think somebody else built up some equity, uh, but uh, evidently that didn't happen. Chip Kelly had tremendous power even before. He won the battle over Howie Roseman. He had significant. But that was a mistake. You know why? Because they fell in love with what he did oh, oh, in yeah. college. No and so, yes, those two examples, 100% correct. Reed built up more equity. I think Chip, I think that came with. I think that came with he the job. He was the flavor disc- of the month. Uh, uh, he yeah, was, exactly. He was, We're going to give you everything just to satisfy you and appease you. And yeah. listen, I, I quite frankly, I. I I don't know what direction. See, I think ultimately, no matter who they hire, the fan base is not going to be satisfied. Even if it's Deuce, which I don't think that's oh, going to happen. I it doesn't think matter. I mean, but he, 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 and I'm talking about Jeffrey Laurie, and, and we'll talk about this later in the show, Rich, but it's so easy. The more I dig into this, it's so easy. And I brought it up. You just brought it up. Howie Roseman is the villain in this story. This wasn't Howie Roseman. This was Jeff Lurie, a hundred percent. Howie Roseman wanted to keep Doug Peterson. Howie Roseman, uh, look, th- there's no question he has probably too much power. Right. But you know, when you talk about a Jalen Rager, he took the coaching staff over the scouting staff. The scouting staff wanted Justin Jefferson, like a good GM. <laughs> people are going to get mad at me for saying this. Like a good GM, he was trying to get his coaching staff what they wanted. What they wanted. He's not the villain here. Jeffrey Lurie is the villain. But he's the villain to some extent because of the talent, the lack of well, evaluating sure. part, talent, and the is. fact that I think everyone all of, a, all of a sudden believes that Jeffrey Lurie is the father, how he's the kid that's allowed to run roughshod in the neighborhood, yeah, and it's I, really I, disrupting the rest of the I neighbors. I don't know. If the, if the kid was running roughshod, Doug Peterson would still be here. I, I will say that. So I I don't know. When but that it comes... that speaks to the disconnect again and the goofiness within the organization oh, and, because and that's nothing. All so Lord. going back to what we've talked about now for the last several weeks and even prior when we were speculating if Doug was going to return, resign, or get fired, who the hell would want to deal with this type of mess? Uh, I don't know. Maybe do Staley. And, and you brought up a good. This is where Jeffrey boxed himself in. Look at how many people in this organization are coming out for Deuce Staley. Yesterday it was Brandon Graham. In yep. the past it was Rodney McLeod. Even ex-players, Malcolm Jenkins, Chris Long, high-profile ex-players saying this guy Puts a little more pressure on the owner to quote-unquote. Puts quote, tremendous yeah. pressure. And then you go back to Jeffrey Lurie. Why is Doug Peterson not here? Right. Because he wanted to go outside the organization. Then you get all this pressure to stay inside the organization with Deuce Staley. How does he, how does he do this? I, I got to tell you, man, this guy has really screwed this up. He has put himself, no matter what he does, he's going to be second guess to high heaven. And ultimately, look, Rich, we all understand if the next coach, whoever that might be, 
uh, is successful, none of this is going to matter. But it's going to be really difficult during this transition period, as he said seven different times in his manifesto of nonsense. Seven different times we're heading into a transition period. Uh, I, I, I think he has bungled this at every corner, every turn. And by the way, people ask, why is he doing the interviews in South Florida? Other, other than, look, I want to be in South Florida, too. I'd love to be in Palm Beach. But typically, they have not done it this way in the past. I think to avoid a lot of media uh, exactly, scrutiny. Exactly. Yeah. And he has taken hits. There is nobody. Like I just mentioned Howie Roseman isn't the villain. There is nobody coming to Jeffrey Lurie's defense right now. That's why he's in because, South Florida. Because they think he fired the wrong guy. Well, he did. I mean, I, you know, he did. And by the way, interesting, Doug Peterson today potentially taking the offensive coordinator job with the Seattle Seahawks. Yeah, I saw that. Now, the thing there that people don't understand, Doug is from Bellingham, Washington. When he's done with football, he's going back to the Seattle sure. area. He loves it. That is the only offensive coordinator position he would consider, I, I believe. Could be a good spot, too. I mean, Pete Carroll is a young, what is he, 60-something odd, getting up oh, there, yeah. right? But but young yes. and vi- maybe. He might be 70, believe it or not. Maybe. He might be yeah. vibrant at that age. But, again. I look older than Pete Carroll. Uh, That's you know. depressing. That's depressing. <laughs> Perhaps that's, that's the opening hair. up the door for him to get back in the coaching. None of these, none of these candidates. Uh, 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 you it, know uh, what it you, is. You need talent at the end of the day. Ultimately, you have to have players. Yeah, oh, of course. End of the day, it doesn't matter if it's X, Y, or Z as head coach or you and I. Look, look at the hot candidates every year. Look at Robert Sala. Who turned Robert Sala into a hot candidate? I'll tell you who. Nick Bosa did. When Nick Bosa came in, it just wrecked this That defense, league. yeah. Wrecked it. Uh, yep. Who turned Adam Gase into a hot candidate? It's <laughs> it's laughable now. Who turned him in there? Peyton, Peyton Manning, Manning with 600 points and 50 touchdowns. And all of a sudden, Adam Gase is a genius. Look, y- you can't win. Uh, Bill Belichick's the greatest ca- uh, coach of all time. Uh, he-, he wasn't winning games this year. Nope. Uh, that's just what this league is. Personnel first. People need to understand that. And then, you know, I, I always go back to Chip Kelly and, and you know, because if you go, Jeffrey Lurie's obsessed with this innovative tag. And at what point is innovation cease to be innovation? In other words, Rich, uh, if everybody's doing the same thing, like think about Billy Bean and analytics and baseball. When he was doing it, it was innovative. Right. But – if everybody does it, right, yeah. then it just becomes it's who the does it. It's the norm. Yes, yeah. who who does it best? Yeah, and and that's where we are, I think, in the NFL. And Jeffrey Laurie is behind the curve. He's going to hate that. I hope he hears it. You've been on. I tell you, he's been your. Uh, oh, he's you're like an assassin with Jeffrey Laurie. I mean, he's he's been a marked man. I'm not the only one. And by the way, the Eagles do not like that. But understand when. So. I'm just curious, when they do hire a head coach, um, I'm wondering what kind of questions will be directed towards Jeffrey Lurie to start. Because typically, don't they introduce the head coach? Yeah, and he's going to introduce him and get the heck out that's, of there. Yeah, see, he gets he gets a free pass in that regard, too, yeah. because you probably want to know the thought process behind the hiring. And there's going to be no league meetings, most likely. That's right. It, it's going, he's, going to get, he's going to get a free pass. But that, the questions are all going to be there uh, in whoever the head coach is going to be. He's going to be hung out to dry, often like Doug Peterson. Uh, and, and to talk about it all... My buddy Ed Kratz, Ed Kratz from SportsIllustrated.com, Eagles Maven. Uh, we'll talk to him about this coaching search. Search Lincoln Riley, which is the story he broke here on AM 1490. Uh, sports betting, radio, more extending the play.